So if you can't stretch to something Italian and red, how about something Japanese and green? Still a two-seater, still sporty. Come on, Alex Riley wants you to spend some money. The Mazda MX-5 is the world's most popular sports car. But it was this car, now largely forgotten, that showed that Mazda had the technology to build a great sports car for everyday driving. They called it the RX-7. The RX-7 lived on until 2002, and the final cars are a bit of a junior supercar, much loved by the Maxing boys. But the original Series 1 is a lovely, simple sports car that deserves to be on your list of desirable, affordable classics. Now, a lot of the cars we've driven on this series have been big, nice, beefy classics. But these little uncomplicated beauties are just as desirable, and the RX surely is. There's loads to say about this car, and one thing I need to tell you about straight away is the engine, which is very clever. So, let's start with that. Now, the RX-7 has a Wankel rotary engine. Now, this hasn't got any pistons like a typical engine. Instead, it's got a three-cornered rotor, which spins within a chamber. Now, that clever engine may only be 1100cc, but it produces 115 brake horsepower, which is enough to take the RX-7 up to 120 miles an hour and not to 60 in under nine seconds. The Vehicle is a light revvy unit, and most people want to rev their nuts off it as soon as they get behind the wheel. In fact, people were so keen to rev these things that Mazda even fitted a warning buzzer to stop them hitting the red line. Sports cars today have got complicated traction control systems, huge tyres and lowered suspension and all that. Well, this car is completely different. It's really well balanced with delicate handling, fairly narrow tyres and not too much power. Can I use the word sweet? Well, if the answer is yes, then this car is very sweet. Braking is by discs front and rear. The suspension is well set up. The weight distribution is pretty much 50-50, and it doesn't weigh too much. This car is very nimble, and it handles really well. It's an easy car to drive in many ways, but there are some minor drawbacks. The RX-7 isn't particularly spacious. I'm six foot four, and I've got to have the seat reclined way back so that my head isn't hitting the roof. There is a back seat, but it's about big enough for a free Yorkshire Terrier or a Cocker Spaniel. You wouldn't put anyone in there that you liked for a long journey. The boot, on the other hand, is quite nice-sized. A bit shallow, but you can get plenty of shopping and weekend away stuff in there. But, minor niggles aside, there is one particular thing that tends to scare off most potential RX-7 owners. Now, probably the biggest drawback of the Wankel Rotary engine is its thirst. This is an 1100cc car that drinks like a 4-litre. Around town, you'd be lucky to get 18 to the gallon. On a run, 21 maybe. But if you're going to get one of these, make sure you've got deep pockets. But come on, all cars have got niggles, and loads of classics are thirsty. So there's quite a few pluses to this car. It's pretty quick. It's easy to drive. It's full through the corners. It even looks pretty good. It's building up quite a compelling case, really, isn't it? I'm building up to it. It's nearly there. The main reason why you should buy an RX-7. And that's the price. A good, clean car with less than 100,000 miles on the clock can be yours for under £2,000. Now, that's because people are a little bit frightened that that weird and wonderful Wankel rotary engine is going to be unreliable. Well, if the oil seals are properly maintained and checked regularly, there should be no problem at all. And remember, the RX-7 is the car that finally proved that the rotary engine could be made to work for the mass market. So, its place in motoring history is assured, and you could buy your very own piece of it. As little as £2,000 is a small price to pay for a car with this much character, performance and practicality. Yes, you'll need to find a specialist who knows what they're doing and the fuel bills will be high. But it really doesn't get any more complicated than that. It's a bargain! That's it for now. Hope you enjoyed the show. But if you fancy seeing more great cars and interesting characters, join us next time on Classic Car Club.